Okay, guys. Um, I'm beginning with implementing advanced five services. Exercise one. Exercise one, configure ice cores storage. Everybody's familiar with that. Is that not correct? But we're gonna do it just to just for practice for our practice sake. Now I'm gonna go to file and storage services. Then I'm gonna go to iSCSI. Now actually with our previous practicals with fill over clustering, we've actually installed the iSCSI row. The iSCSI target server row. Is that not correct? Now what I want us to do, I want us to create a new iSCSI drives that we're going to be using for this uh, lab for exercise one. We're asked to install the that target feature, which, we, which we've done. We asked to configure an iSCSI target, which I'm going to be doing in task two. Then we're asked to configure to configure the MPIO and connect and configure the iSCSI targets. So the first thing we're going to be doing is going to task two. We're going to be creating a new disk. And we're going to be creating a new target. And we're going to be calling our target PCE1. Now, can we go to the task here? And we click on new iSCSI what? Virtual what? This. Of course, the wizard is going to come up. Just wait for it to scan through. It's ready. Now the next step we're asked to do is to configure a new disk. So we're going to be putting it on server 1, and it's going to be on drive C, and we'll click on next. Sorry. So we click on next. So the virtual disk name should be iSCSI. I hope we've not given that name already before. Have we given the name iSCSI disk one? Have we done that? Disk one, okay. So type I, iSCSI disk one. Of course, if we have something like that, it will tell us it's already existing. It's fine. So we click next. If yours is already, if that is what you give to your name, it's fine. We can always change it. Five, ten, twenty-five. Yeah, since of you like a dollar, put one dollar. <laughs> <laughs> next. So um, I'm not going to use five gig uh, because you can see the free space we have is six gig, right? So I'm just going to use one gig, okay? Yeah, so because we don't have enough space, so we're going to click next. Then um, we're going to create a new SCSI target. We're going to click next. Then we're going to call this target uh, PC, PCE SRV1. PCE SRV1. Then we click next. And we're going to add the asset servers. We're asked to add actually two IP addresses. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to post my, I'm going to post this now. I'm going to activate one of my network adapters so that I can have two communications. Okay. So I'm going to post it's dot one dot three. Of course, I've activated it, and that is it. So I, I'm only using it because I need it now. Okay. Later on, if I don't need it, I'm going to just discard it. Okay. Just a minute. Now I'm going to click on add after I've confirmed my IP address is there. So I'm going to enter the IQA. Sorry, the I, I'm going to be using IP address as my access server. So I'm going to type 192.168.1.1. That's my first IP address. I'm going to add the second one, which is 192.168.1.3, because that was what was given to me. So sometimes in your practicals, you may be given a different IP address. Are we together? So even though your lab manual or your lab practical tells you you must use this range and this range, it doesn't matter. 
Are you getting me? If the if if the lab says use this IP address, it's simple. What do you do? What do you do? You configure a static IP address. It's simple. Use your brains. Configure a static IP address. If the DSP doesn't give you the same range, configure what? A static IP address. So I'm going to click OK. And that's my IP addresses. So I'm going to click Next. Uh, we should view the results. And we're not using any authentication. So that's the result. The security uh, chap It's disabled. We're not authenticating it. And we're going to click on Create. So we just allow that to run through. And when it's completed, we'll proceed. So now let's go to Tax 3. In our tax three, what are we doing? Yeah. MPIO, right? So we're going to log into where? Server what? Server two, is that not correct? Huh? So let's move to server two. Or uh, some of you, if you're using three and four, server two should be server three. So this is my server three, and this should be my server two. So I'm going to log in now to server two. That's it. I'm going to minimize this. Okay, what we are what we asked to do here on the Okay, actually, we are going to, in order for us to add that MPIO, we need, that, we need to add a, a row first. Actually, we needed to disable a row, but I don't think we have that running. Do we have routing and remote access services installed on server 2? No. no, so we just keep that. We'll just move all over to adding the rows and feature wizard. So we'll click Add Rows and Features. So we'll click Next. Next. So we we'll select server 2. I don't know why it's giving me 169. Click next. Yeah, I know it's one of the cluster, but I don't know why it's not giving its IP address. Okay. It doesn't make sense. Okay, now we're looking for the multi part IO, right? It's a feature, right? So we'll click next. So we'll look for it. It should be down towards the bottom. That's it. Multi path. Did you see that? Of course, of course, we click next. And we click on what? Install. So let's wait for it to get installed and we'll proceed. It has been installed, so I'm going to click on close. The next task I'm going to be doing is going to iSCSI, which is enabled already. We're asked to connect to the target PCE SVR1. Is that not correct? So we'll go to iSCSI target. Then our target is what? Quick connect. So we type P. PCE SROV1. That was what I used, right? So I'll click Quick Connect. So let's see. Okay, so there's no discovery host found with that. So I'm going to come to Discover. Um, so I'll go to Discover Portal, type 192.168.1.3. So if I come to target now, refresh. Let's see if it comes up. Okay, let's go to the main server system. Let's just confirm that everything is fine there. Thank you. 
Okay, that's one to three. Um, do you know what I would do? Go to the properties. Where you have the initiators, I'm going to add one of the IP address on my server 2, which is 192.168.1.2. I just want to see if that will fix the problem. Yeah. So that is why I keep telling you guys um, one of the one of the things I let me save for this one too. So because of this, I have to make mess. You see when I bought that thing, right? Because I need to save all the settings. Okay, guys, um, can we go to server manager? Go to tools, then we go to MPIO. That is it there. MPIO, click on it. Okay, have you clicked on it? Can you go to the discovery multi path? We're asked to enable add support for iSCSI device. So we click add support for add iSCSI device. We check it. OK. Click OK. And go back again to tools MPIO. Uh, we see a product there, right? The product ID, though it's not sound with the same ID as Microsoft, the what Microsoft has there, but it's fine. Mm -hmm. But we can see a product ID there. Say vendor eight products. We can actually come and add, and you can type a device ID as well. But our device ID pops up immediately. Is that not correct? Okay. Now. Um, once again, we need to connect and configure the iSCSI. So we've done that already on the initiator. Uh, disconnect. We've connect and enable multipath. And for advanced configuration, can we go to the iSCSI targets now? iSCSI targets. That should be this. If you click on PCE server one discovery targets, if you type advance, advance takes you to where you can put IP address, which we've put that already. Then connect to another target, enable multipath, configure the following advance. Uh, for local, we use Microsoft iSCSI initiator. For the initiator IP address, initiator we use, uh, we're actually in .1.2 server, right? So we use .1.2. The target portal IP address, okay, that's not coming up, I don't know why. Yeah, the, the target port IP is just supposed to pop up on this side. I think we've done all those configuration because you can see it's already here. Because if you go to the PC target, if you go to, uh, 
your targets there we have you can see the two targets they are there if you click details it tells you everything about it so that's the ip address of the targets local adapter is using microsoft source ip address is default so actually based on our connection those configurations have already been set up already are we together if you go to the pce server one you go to property it shows you everything based on your connections then of course if you click on device it tells you the name of the device physical drive 3 it tells you lawn 0 port 3 and of course you can screw to read the device interface name okay um, I think all those settings have already been configured okay the next uh, part we'll be going to now it's configuring file classification okay that's all actually MPIO is simple what it does is like if you go to MPIO again yeah that's the device ID we're using currently. Then this is this actually allows you to be able to enable multipath. Are you getting me? Of course, uh, your reboot is required. Now, I think the server is still refreshing. That's the MPIO opening now. Hmm. Now, did you notice now we now have the Microsoft mm -hmm. device now with the exact ID they gave to us yeah. there on these practicals, right? MSF 2005 ISCOSI bus type X09. Is that not correct? So if you come in here, you can discover that the, it's added now. Is that not correct? Yeah. Then, of course, um, So that's it. If you go to iSCSI Initiator, and Discovery Path, I just want to check if that still applies. OK, it's still using the same old configuration. OK, guys, that's all. As long as we have that configuration on I, um, the IPIO, we are certain that our device can be accessed by multiple what? Computers. You can see the device there, right? Huh? So guys, that's it for configuring iSCSI targets. This is what companies do in order for them to be able to connect to multiple devices. This is actually a drive, but it's Microsoft vendor, because it's Microsoft iSCSI drive we're creating. But if you have like um, a, um, uh, Western Digital or Seagate, whatever company's hard drive you're using as your iSCSI hardware, let's say Fiber China, they will also appear there. The device ID will be displayed there. Okay, guys, that's all for MPIO.